So in this video, I'd like to go over Wireshark and how it can be used to inspect HL7 data. So in here with Wireshark, I have a preloaded capture file. Uh, it is a raw capture, so it's been recording all the network traffic on the server for the HL7 server. And it's quite a large capture file, 160,000 packets. Um, so obviously we don't want to go through these one by one and try and figure out what we're looking for. So at the top here with the filter, which says apply to display filter, you can just type in HL7, press enter, and Wireshark will start narrowing down automatically the packets we want. So you can see these six packets here for HL7. So right here we have the HL7 packets, and these are the raw packets from the Welsh Allen sending uh, fake patient information to Mirth Connect in order to be processed. And Wireshark shows you the entire packet. So in this case, we have the Ethernet frame, the IP, TCP, um, all the different protocols that make up an HL7 packet, finalizing with the actual HL7 um, information. So we can click on the arrow over on the side here, and you can see the individual components of the HL7 message. And it's nice with Wireshark because it, it will automatically read the HL7 data and interpret it for us. Uh, then the bottom pane here, you can see the actual raw data. So this is the, you can see this is all in hexadecimal. This is the actual content of the packet that has not been interpreted. But in the middle pane here, we have the individual fields. So we can see that it's a message, HL7 in this case, coming from Welsh Allen. Um, and you can see the date this was captured was in 2018. And we can keep going down the fields like PID, patient information. So we have our patient ID, the name of the patient. And as we keep opening these up, we can see other information such as the, uh, the time, the date and time that the measurements were captured. Uh, we have things like, in this case, the pulse oximetry, um, which was 97, 97%. And you can keep going through these packets and see the individual packets for themselves, but, but in, in and of itself, it's not enough to get the full context of what's going on. So what we can do is we can take any one of these packets at the top here, right click on it, go to follow, and then follow TCP stream or TCP stream. And what that will do is it will take the entire conversation from beginning to end of the two machines. So in this case, we can see that it sent the HL7 data multiple times. And if we close this, you can see this is the entire conversation. So it starts with the TCP handshake, then it sends all of the information it needs to from the, HL, from the Welsh Allen to the server, and then it finally closes the connection out. But unfortunately, Wireshark cannot perform magic. Um, it can only recognize known file types. So if there is, for example, a protocol that uses a custom uh, system for communication, for uh, it won't necessarily be able to read that. So if I go to this other packet capture, which is called ECG cap, you might be able to tell what that is. It's the communication between one of the Space Labs cube ECGs and the central station. And you can see it's all pretty much all UDP traffic. And unfortunately, it's all being interpreted as just data. Um, Wireshark is not able to see what is actually being sent. And it's not able to determine what the values mean in this, in this context. Uh, in this case, it's probably using a custom protocol from Space Labs to communicate between the devices. So there's not very much we can do from Wireshark to figure out what's being sent unlike with the Welsh Allens where you can basically see everything. Um, there are other things you can do with it though. For example, you can look at statistics, IO graph, and you can see that this is the rate of data that's being sent over the cables at any given time during the capture. You can also look at things like the uh, conversations. So you can see the actual with the way Wireshark works is in the captures, it just it lays everything out in the rate in the at the time that it's received, so it it doesn't really give you a good idea of where conversations between devices begin and end. So with this tool right here, it will show you the actual sessions between the individual devices. 
Finally, I have this packet capture from an Alaris infusion pump uh, connected over Wi-Fi. Um, and in this case, it doesn't really do very much. Um, what it tries to do is it continually tries to uh, reach this test.interpeak.se website and this it does a DNS request for a.rootservers.net, uh, which comes back as unreachable. And it just keeps trying to do that over and over again for the entire capture. So it never actually ends up doing anything. All it tries to do in this entire capture is just figure out where these two places are, and that's it. Um, probably what it's doing is it's looking for um, its home server to look for updates, or uh, there's other reasons that it could try, be, try and reach out like that. But at this particular time, um, the access point it was connected to did not have internet access. So these packets essentially went nowhere which is why it keeps trying to do the same thing over and over again without its success. But this kind of gives you an idea of what it might look like if a device is not able to actually reach what it wants to reach, is you'll have these just the same DNS request over and over and over. Uh, you'll have some that come back with the ICMP port unreachable, um, and you'll never see it initiate any kind of uh, TCP or UDP session. So if I go up to statistics, and um, conversations, I'm sorry, not conversations. It's, uh, oh yeah, it is, it is conversations. So statistics, conversations, and you can see up here, the TCP and UDP tabs here. There are no TCP uh, sessions open at all. Uh, there is a UDP stream, um, but it never does anything successful with that. Um, so we can narrow it down a bit with UDP. As you can see, there's not really anything that's going on. Um, SSDP is, is the only other uh, protocol besides that that's currently in use, um, but it never, again, it's trying to access outside of the internet, reach the outside internet, and it's never actually able to succeed to, to do that. Uh, we also go to like statistics and IO graph. Uh, you can see that it's, it's a very errat like a rhythmic, but very uh, almost erratic kind of pattern to the traffic. So you can see these spikes popping up but there's never any kind of constant data stream going through. So that kind of tells you that it's not able to send anything. It's not able to, it's not receiving anything. It's not sending anything really of any kind of consequence. Um, normally with network traffic, if it's sustained, you'd have a, or if it was a decent amount of traffic or a decent amount of information, you'd have at least some kind of, you know, peak and valley that would, that would continue on for a while, but this is like straight up and down, um, just bursting data and nothing else coming out of it. Finally, we can also get an idea of, of the scale of how, what it's doing if we go to statistics and um, protocol hierarchy. Click on that and you can see that it gives you a hierarchy of the actual protocols that are coming through and what's being done. And in this case, it gives you a percentage of what the pa what packets are most, le most found in this capture. So you can see that Almost all of them are UDP packets, uh, specifically uh, DNS requests, um, address res ARAP requests, ARP requests. Um, there's a couple ICMPs, but there's never any kind of actual data being sent through the, the, the line. So these are all different approaches to discovering what's wrong with this. And we can kind of see that, okay, based on this, based on the trying to continually reach out and find things, it's not able to actually reach, and it's not able to actually find what it's looking for. Hence why it's not actually sending any data, and there's never any kind of TCP stream that actually sends the data to something else. So as a diagnostic thing, this was very useful.